Hello everybody, <laughs> it's Dragona from Susibo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I'm very happy today. I just, you know, I'm over the moon. My channel hit 5,000 subscribers and I want to share in this joy with you. And I want to thank you all for being there for me, for leaving me beautiful comments, for subscribing to my channel. I want to thank the people who were with me from the start, but I also want to welcome all the new people who recently joined and subscribed this channel. And I had a look at my videos and I realized one of the videos that stands out that got the most views and the most subscribers is the one about making charms. So today I wanted to celebrate that and I want to do another video of making charms with recycled items but this time it's not going to be packaging it's going to be with plastic cards like these I'm sure you have them library cards shopping cards you know you collect points you collect loyalty cards I don't know I suppose you can use credit cards as well but they have these raised numbers oh, I suppose you can incorporate that into your design as well no rules but as a way of thanking you all for supporting my channel i created a little digital this one and it's going to be free on my website you will find the link in the description box below and this will help you create charms like the ones i created here and the ones we're going to create together today so this is free to download and we'll talk more about it later on but just so you know everyone gets a free digital whoever watches my channel so please visit my website and download it's my gift for you from me okay so now i want to show you what i made i had so much fun last few days and have a look at these i just adore these this is just with a few uh, scraps of fabric and a little owl charm okay that's what they look on the back. I hope you can see this. Now, I just could not resist. I turned some of them into earrings. That's what they look on this side. And uh, look at these. Oh, look at that. With leaves. Uh, would you believe it? I turned some of them into these. I added these metal charms and I made little charms with initials and then on this side you can see that that's from the card who would have thought that the plastic cards can be made to look like metal okay and I will share with you four different ways of doing this okay to get different uh, results uh, for example this is done with gesso and alcohol inks this effect is done with black acrylic paint and silver wax gilding wax or finger wax now this here is also done with acrylic paint blue and brown with a bit of gold wax okay and there's one more yeah, it is this one here this is done with a textured gesso that has color and i will show you that as well and with a bit of gold and bronze wax on top okay so this is really four different ways so if you don't have acrylics you might have uh, alcohol inks you might have just gesso you know basic supplies and basic tools just want to show you a few more examples okay this is with numbers and i turned them into paper clips don't they look like rusted metal what else oh here i made more paper clips look at that and it is monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday it's if you're making a bullet journal that's what they look on the back I think they're really really cute okay what else oh it's here oh yeah i added some of them to postcards there we go. i love these here look 
combined two of them together great addition to any journal yeah and then i added some to the tags it's my favorite that's what they look on the back I have a few more here. Yeah. I think they're great addition to journals in general. And ah, like I've shown you, you can make jewelry with them. <laughs> and look at these. I had in mind of adding these to my uh, journal that I do for a full year. Something like my healing journal from last year. So I have all the months of the year. So great if you make a journal like a planner for your whole year so you know what you're doing in what month okay that's those i've shown you the rest so if you'd like to see how you can make these charms stay tuned the tutorial is coming up these are the tools that you're going to need to create these you need scissors we'll be doing the cutting with just scissors plastic is really hard to cut with a knife or with a guillotine or the paper trimmer so scissors worked for me so i suggest use the scissors you'll need a brush you'll need a straw you'll need some of these uh, sponges for the paint you can also cut up just an ordinary sponge into smaller pieces and use that as well it doesn't have to be this okay you'll need something to punch holes i'm using this this tool as was given to me it's a really cheap um, tool that you can get really afford it's affordable if you get it online it's normally used in leather industry to punch holes in, in belts and and uh, you know straps but i love it because it creates a really small hole perfect for these charms or you can use um, your crocodile if you have it or any other tool that can cut through the plastic okay you'll need a sanding block You'll need a piece of uh, either a plastic bag with some acetate so that you can put your cards to dry. And to finish it off, you'll need some of these. They're called bulb pins. Okay. Or if you have some jump rings from broken jewelry or if you have some that you bought, then you'll need also pliers to attach. And I'll show you both ways of doing it. Okay, that covers the tools. When it comes to paint, you have several options. I'll show you quickly uh, all four different um, ways of creating this uh, metal rust look to your cards. I've experimented with a lot more, obviously, but I found that these four work the best. So you'll need some black acrylic paint and a silver finger wax or gilding wax. That's what it looks like. There are many different brands. Just get the one that you can. Okay. The other, another way of creating this effect is with uh, turquoise blue and burnt sienna. So that's also acrylic paint in those colors. And maybe old gold finger wax. So it's old gold, antique gold, whatever. Uh, it's not as bright as, say, this one. I'll just show you the difference. Okay. That's the difference. That's the yellow gold. That's the old gold look. Okay. Now, one way that I really enjoyed creating is with just plain white gesso. So it's plain white gesso and some alcohol inks. Okay. I have here olive green, brown. I have, it's called Caribbean blue. And I have red orange. Okay, so orange, blue, green, and brown works well. So it doesn't have to be the exact uh, same uh, color. And if you happen to have some of this uh, gesso, sorry, I hope I'm in the frame. It is antique, antique gesso. It's called antique gesso in brown. It's a colored gesso that has some sort of texture. Some craft shops have these in different colors. And I happen to have this brown one. It looks really like rust. And it has these bits inside. Feels like sand. It probably is sand. I'm not sure. This 
writing is so small that I can't read it. But it's basically a gesso, colored gesso with a bit of texture inside. So if you happen to have this, you can use that. It, it's gesso and the color at the same time. So it's quite good and I love the effect. And with that, I found that the light gold or bronze works the best. Okay, that's for the color. We've covered the tools, we've covered the paint. Now we need something to finish up our product. And I've been using extra gloss varnish. This is acrylic based varnish, doesn't have any smell and it dries really fast. So any brand gloss varnish or satin or matte, whichever one you have, it will work. You just have to decide what you want your finished charm to look like. I happen to have this one and I, I've been using it and this is the effect I got. It's not really that glossy, but it's nice. And I've, I've done two coats of the varnish on only on the front. Okay. If you want, and you happen to have some clear nail polish, like I have here, that I wasn't using, it was becoming really thick, you can use nail polish as well. And this is the result. It's a glossy and it has almost that glossy look. And I also like this look as well so i've done some of these and some of these so whatever you have whatever look you prefer just use that so that's totally up to you this does have a bit of a smell you know how nail polish has this acetone smell so yeah okay and apart from this you will need some acetone based glue okay you will need some glue and of course, you will need cards, loyalty cards, library cards, whatever. You will need this. Uh, this, like I said at the beginning, is available on my website. Just go and download A4 or letter size, print it out on a paper that is at least 160 GSM. So I wouldn't suggest printing this on a thin copy paper because once you add um, this on top, it will start uh, to unglue and warp okay so thicker paper i'd say a thickness of scrapbooking paper if you happen to have some scrapbooking paper that you don't like that it's white on one side you can cut it to the shape of a4 or letter and run it through your printer and print these images on the back and yeah so you can do that if you don't want to use this you can just use whatever paper you have that is at least 160 gsm and perhaps just to stamp some images or numbers on your charms i've been using these uh, you can see here i had these maybe that's the best way to see they are little stamps silicon stamps of, of herbs and I've used those in here and I absolutely love the result. Also on these ones, I used these images and I stamped initials with my stamp on top. So I also like how those turned out. Okay, so you can use your stamps. And then of course you can take it further and use ink, different colors and create different effects. I'm just showing you the basics, giving you ideas, but then what you do with this, it's up to you. You can take it any way you like. All right, so we've covered everything. Let's get started. I've set up my desk and I put this plastic underneath because I don't want to get paint everywhere. Now, it doesn't really matter what side you're painting on because we're going to put paint on one side and we glue the pictures on the other but you can also do it by painting both sides and having them cut in any shape that you like and then use them as a backdrop for example this is what i mean and you can see here you can paint that on both sides and then have another charm on top and it looks like a metal piece so we'll do one like that just so we see what it looks like without gluing the pictures on the back. I'm going to put gloves on. It gets really messy. Uh, which one should we start with? Okay, let's start with the acrylic. Okay, black acrylic. I'll put this away. Put that in the middle. You just get the paint. This is just black acrylic. And you put about that much. 
hope you can see and then get one of those sponges or you can use any sponge maybe cut a piece of something you know and then you just dab you just do that I want a little bit more paint there so you just go in a thick layer okay that's it and you let it dry take another card put it there now we're going to do these two colors so i've been doing it like this just you know a few drops here and there of the blue and of this and as you can see i'm using quite generous amount of paint and hang on i'll just take the clean one okay and then we go again like this and when you finish when it's dry we'll assess and see if we need to do a second coat you know sometimes have to do it in two coats depending on the paint okay i hope you can see so a few drops of brown few drops of blue and then you just blend it and it looks like rusted metal okay now we want to get gesso just white gesso plain white gesso and i'm just going to do exactly the same layer of gesso over it okay put that one aside to dry as well let's do one more with gesso since i have it here let's do you know the one that we're going to do the same on both sides we'll do that one One more left is with this. Okay, I'm going to use the, the one that I used to create that other brown. And I'm just going to go in. And it's the same thing. I'm just going to get the white. I'm moving this to a cleaner piece of plastic. Just so that I don't pick up the white. Okay. So as you see, it's the same principle. It's just using different colors and different um, material, either gesso or acrylic paint. We'll do the trick. Okay, this one's a bit more textured because it has that thing. So we'll now leave them to dry. If you want to speed up the drying process, you can use just the hair dryer, I suppose the heat tool I have dried all of them quickly with the blow dryer and I want to apply gesso on the other side of this one because I want to do one with just with just paint and without gluing the pictures just want to do that as well i haven't done it but i want to so that one has gesso on both sides i think this one's quite good it doesn't need a second coat of gesso this one also it's dried really well and i don't see anything from the old card now this one has a few white spots but i'm not going to worry about it i think it's good enough 
once we add wax, it's not going to be visible. Now this one needs a little bit more because I can see quite a bit of white coming through and I think I need to add more colored. So here we had that blue. So I'm basically just going to repeat what I've done the first time. Just adding a second coat of paint. Hoping that it will cover the areas that were a little bit bold <laughs> after the first attempt. Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah. That is it for the painting. They're all nice and dry. Which one should we do first? Uh, let's do the black one first. So for the black one, I use silver gilding wax or finger wax. And this is a um, solvent-based one. That's the brand that's available here. That's Finger Metallic Wax. Okay. So you just take some on your finger and you just brush it onto this black. Probably put something on me. Scrap paper. Okay, so you just I love how that comes to life. Looks like a silver almost. I love it. Okay, so that's the back of that one done. So now for this one that we've done with the brown and blue, I think. Uh, old gold paste looks really well. I'll just use different finger. And again, you just get some on your finger and you just brush it. Okay, now the paint is coming off here a little bit. Did I press too hard or it didn't dry properly? Okay. So you just that we can certainly add more of this later on but for now that seems to be plenty i love how it looks really looks like old rusted metal doesn't it hope you can see okay we prepare that one. now with this one i said i used a bit of gold this is not a solvent based one it's water based but it works uh, all right. So you'll notice that the solvent-based ones are kind of uh, almost like they're greasy and they re spread really well. But this, this is more like acrylic paint. So you just rub it gently. If it's not dry enough, these bits will start coming off. So you don't press too hard. It has to be really dry. Okay, just really, I'm barely, I'm barely touching it, okay? You see some bits are coming off, that's fine. Should probably dry it a little bit better. And you can also do this step, and we will do this step again. Once you cut everything up, you'll need to do it around the edges of your charms. Now for this one, I like to use alcohol inks and a straw. I just take these colors, open up the lids, and I start with brown, just like that. Then I add a bit of blue, and a bit of green. And some orange. Okay. 
and you get your straw I hope I won't get dizzy now and you just blow Look at that color, isn't it gorgeous? It is absolutely gorgeous. I hope you can see. I just love it. Okay, now there's quite a bit there left and I have this one. So I'm just going to do this just to collect that ink. But it doesn't really matter. Now this needs to dry. I'll just let it dry. And I'll do the other one. Maybe I'll use a little bit less. Just to see if I can get a different color. Yeah, so you just dab the color and then spread it with a, with a straw. Now I have a, a bold spot here, so I'll just add a bit more brown. Just want to make this a little bit different than the other one, they're too similar. Yeah. I just love this. Love, love, love. Now we need to wait till it dry, of course. I waited for about five minutes and it seems to be dry, touch dry, so I'll just do this on this side as well. Okay. Let's spread these colors first. Now we can add green. And now a little bit more brown here and I'm out of breath now <laughs> all right I'll, I'll leave these for about 10 minutes to dry really well before we continue while we're waiting for these to dry we'll start with the next step and the next step would be to glue pictures on this side and in this case, we won't do anything, but uh, we need to glue pictures on this side. So if you're going to use the free printable, uh, you'll notice that I've organized the images to fit on one card. So if you want to do these charms, you cut that bit there and glue on top. And I've done this just so that it's easier and it's going to be a least amount of waste in the end. Uh, when I've done this the first time, I had the, all these little images separated and I had to cut them and glue each separately and it took forever. So I think this way it's going to be so much easier. So I'm going to cut, which one should we do? We have four cards. Um, let's cut these bigger ones first. Like 
So we're going to glue that on one card. Maybe we can glue this on the other. Okay, let's do the numbers as well. I kind of like this one. Okay, you've noticed maybe we've got the months of the year, and we've got year, and you have some plain ones. You can stamp letters there. Uh, you can add little pictures you can even draw little pictures you can put special dates there i don't know i just left them blank here you have days of the week you have year 2023 if you want to make little tags for your paper clips and here i just left a few different words these bigger ones they look really nice when you add a little like sentiments they inspire radiate create and there's quite a few and there's also a uh, months of the year so you can add these like january february march and and have them in your journal like that i don't know so it's up to you next step would be let's take this one it seems dry uh, you see there's a little bit of paint here i uh, will just use this to take it off and sand it a little bit. This is just a sanding block that you get from my hardware store. It shouldn't be really expensive. It's actually really cheap. And just to make this a bit less shiny and to get rid of that paint because I find that it's really difficult to glue something over the paint. And I shouldn't be talking while I'm sanding. Sorry about that. nice and clean on the back now we can proceed with the gluing wipe the dust off so which one should we have here i think owls would look good on that okay let's do that so just add the glue And this is acetone based glue you'll know it's acetone if it has a really strong smell but you really want this glued well i don't think normal white glue would work with this because you're gluing paper to plastic okay you have something to spread the glue that would be great And let it dry it takes a bit longer to dry when it's on the plastic with the numbers what should we use with numbers oh, let's use it with this one i like it again wipe the dust off You can also use your fingers to spread this glue, but it dries the skin really bad. So I'll just do this, do that. And you can align one side to save yourself from cutting. I made them a little bit smaller. Maybe this one as well, I can align. So I don't have to cut everywhere, I'll just cut here and cross. 
exactly. I suspect the cards across the world are similar size, but just in case they're not, I made these tiny bit smaller. Okay, now with this one. I think this one would look good with that. Here I'm going to align on this side on top but in the middle because you've got the rounded corners here and my images here are kind of not so rounded. Okay, that's that one. And the lucky last, I'm going to do the leaves. Do this just to spread the glue a little bit. Then I'm aligning just here. Okay, so we're gonna do these. Let's see if we can add some words. Create hope and one more dream. Now you can do some inking around these words if you like, just to make them stand out a little bit better. Now let's just glue this. This, I think. Regular white glue will do the trick. So I'm placing these words um, where I think they look good on the image. Okay. Now cutting. I find it's easiest if you just use scissors. Honestly, I tried with a knife, I tried with a guillotine. It was so difficult. So you just go and you cut like that. Okay. See? See where the corners are? I just do this. Okay, and the rest we finish off with the sanding block. All right, it works the same with all of them. Okay, let's cut some of these. I won't do all of them in front of the camera, that would take forever. I want to do one of each at least. Okay, so number five again here, just like that, just to round it a little bit. Okay, so we're going to do one of each. Which one should we use here? Let's use hope. Or inspire. Let's leave inspire. Okay, snip the corners. And let's do um, just the first one. So we cut ourselves one of each 
and we want this one and I want to cut this one to use for example with something like this so I'm going to cut it here maybe right there and I'll just Okay, let's see if I have anything to use with this little <laughs> that would be cute I think like that. okay so we cut ourselves at least one of each now we have to make holes now I'm gonna use this this also works um, but um, I understand that this tool is quite expensive not everyone has it but this is really kind of cheap and affordable and it works it can go through plastic now I better mark myself where everything looks different once you put that don't want these holes to be in the wrong spot all right let's do this it just takes a little bit of effort to get it off it works I know it's meant for leather but it works on plastic and it even works on wood if it's not too thick punch the hole so that part is done uh, let's let's do this one first so before you add your nail polish or gloss varnish you want to do the final waxing or inking if you prefer ink so I'll just you see now I'm not I'm not using my gloves anymore because it's kind of difficult to do this part with the gloves so I'm just applying this wax on the edges better come closer and I just go also a little bit over the paper and I apply a little bit more on the edges like this Now, I didn't do any of the sanding of this one. It kind of looks all right. But I want to show you another step that you perhaps want to do before you start waxing is if you want to round the corners nicely. Um, this one's probably not good. This one is a good example, I think. Now, where is this one? Yeah. Um, you see how this this corner here is rounded and these are kind of sharp so you take your sanding block and you do this I find this the easiest way to round 
these corners okay and then they're nice and round and i think this one needs to be trimmed like that so you just do that and you can also you can also sand these a little bit let's, let's round these For whatever reason, these edges are sharp, just sand them down. I just want to show you the difference. See how these are sharp and these are rounded. So the final look is up to you. If you prefer rounded, you do that with this or you just leave them like that. In fact, let's round this one too. But this one, you probably find if you cut them straight this is really pointy here so with these ones definitely round them a little bit just to take the, that edge off So that they're not so sharp anymore. All right, done with the sanding. Let's continue with waxing. So we've done the, the one with silver. Now we want to do this one. And that is that one. Okay. So, oops. I go around. And I go on the edges. You can also ink these images a bit more if you want and you do that also before you add this finger wax. You can also do this part after you add the varnish. But, you know, I prefer to do it now. And once I finish with the varnish, that's it. Look how it looks like a real metal, doesn't it? Nobody would know it's actually plastic. Okay. Now with these ones, I'll just add a little bit of um, this same old gold on the edges to cover the white. And also a little bit across. You can try with silver. In fact, let's try one with silver. Try the small one with silver. It will also look good. slightly different look and you can experiment with different colors um, it doesn't have to be exactly what I used now we have this one let's do the antique gold I'm just going across the paper a little bit instead of inking it just adding a little bit of that gold I love how it looks. Okay. Oops, that's from the other, the other one. We've done 
these. Oh, there's this one left. Okay. And here, I'm using this lighter gold. Now I have to be careful with this one because it's water based, it's a little bit runny. Now, you don't have to have all of these colors, oh, I it up. but I'm showing you different ones just so that you know what can be done, what can you use. Uh, but of course, use whatever you've got, you know, if you have just gold, just do the gold. I made a bit of a mess of this one, but who cares? Because <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> okay, yeah. Just get the white one, I guess. Try to fix. I'll try to fix it with the bronze one. It's totally gonna end up looking. Okay, it's probably enough. I've done enough to mark it up. But anyway, kind of looks cool, I think. <laughs> you get the idea. These are done, but these four need to be protected with either varnish or nail polish. So I'm going to do the number with nail polish. I don't think my brush can reach inside, so I'll just take another one. Okay. This is what you do. We don't need to add varnish to this side. I don't usually, just the side where we glue the picture. So you go from the center towards the edges just gently you don't want it to leak over and then you turn it around just so you cover all of these and now you let it dry once it's dry you repeat that you will notice that it will kind of it looks glossy now it looks like it's enough but once it dries it kind of soaks into the paper and if it looks uneven so definitely a second coat will be good okay that's for that now these four i will use this i prefer to use a real varnish because it doesn't really have a strong smell and it dries really quickly this is water-based acrylic varnish and i normally i buy this in a big container but I put it in a smaller one so that I can use it easily okay and for that I need a brush and you do the same like you would do with nail polish you just spread this on your image from the center towards the edges that I put too much if you put too much it's going to leave the streaks but I don't know you might want that look just spread that well and let's do the same for the other two. This also needs to be repeated twice. And if you want it to look even glossier, you can do it three or four times, but I usually do it just twice. 
All right, I'll just let these dry and I will repeat this. So I'll do a second coat of varnish and a second coat of this, and then we can finish off the project. Okay, while these are drying, we can complete these. You take your jump ring and you need two pliers. Okay, you hold this like that and you take this one and you just twist one towards you like that. Okay, you don't open it like that, you just twist. Now you take your charm and you put that through and you take that other one like that. Okay, now again hold it just like you had it the first time and then bring them together. Okay. And there it is. I absolutely love this one. It looks so nautical and beautiful colors, doesn't it? Even on that side, it's pretty. Okay. So that is it for that one. Now with this one, I was going to use that one, but I realized the opening is facing that way. That's going to cause me difficulty so I'm going to use that one instead and I'll just use this bigger one again because it would be better if I can use a small one but then it's hard to uh, actually show you so I'm holding it like that then twist to open it up Put it through the hole, take the other charm, and then again, bring them together. Oh, it's so gorgeous, that one as well. I love it. Okay, so that's how you do it with jump rings. Oh my god, I dropped this one. I dropped this one on its face. I think I'll have to fix it by adding a third coat of um, polish, nail polish. Okay, well, these are dry. And I think with these ones, the bigger ones, I'll just use these pins. And they are perfect to add a bit of something behind them like some fabrics pieces make like a little cluster of something and you can you can also combine say if i have that one and that one together you can do that as well okay that's done that's done now with these these long ones i like to add them here but to attach them to um paper clip you can certainly use these but i find it works better if i just add jump ring so i quickly added uh, a jump ring here so to get it onto this you just put, take that apart a little bit put that there and twist around and it's ready to be clipped onto a page okay i think these ones are great to be used as a necklace so i bought these ages ago really cheap and i got quite a few and i think this is going to look great on a chain like that how pretty is that? I really love it. I love it. But of course, it can be used in a journal as well. All right, so this is what we've created together. That one, that one, and also this one that is still a bit tacky, and I have to add. One more coat of nail polish. Sorry about that, but 
you've seen in the other examples what it should look like but yeah unfortunately i dropped it and you can take this any way you like from here you can use it for jewelry for your junk journals to add to presents to cards whatever it's up to you what you do with it don't forget to download your free digital and i will leave some pictures some still images of these charms at the end of this video as a slideshow in case you want to see them up close thank you so much for watching thank you so much for subscribing to my channel love you guys